Hi, this is Juby Provido, and you're listening to Contemplating the Rosary, where we talk about how to pray the Holy Rosary even better. In 104 episodes, over four seasons, we will explore a method of how to say the Rosary the way Pope St. John Paul II, Pope Paul VI, and other Rosary advocates recommend, and that's by contemplating the mysteries while we say the Our Father, Hail Mary, and Glory Be. This podcast is based on the book Beyond the Veil, Contemplating the Mysteries of the Holy Rosary, available at Lazada in the Philippines and in print or Kindle on Amazon, wherever you are. Visit KindlingsPress.com for more information and where you can read and download the episode guide. This is episode 75 of the series, the 22nd episode of season 3. It's nice to have you back here listening in on how we can pray the rosary the contemplative way. Today, we'll be exploring the third glorious mystery, the descent of the Holy Spirit. In this episode, let's imagine what went on during Pentecost when Mary and the apostles, as well as other disciples, were praying in Jerusalem. In its original form, Pentecost was called Shavuot which is celebrated 50 days after the first day of Passover. In reference to the Passion of Christ, Passover was Holy Thursday, and so 50 days after that would be Shavuot. It is a day that commemorates when Moses was given the Torah, the first five books of sacred scriptures, which we Christians call the Pentateuch. Pentateuch meaning five books. Originally, it was a harvest festival where bales of barley were brought to the temple beginning Passover. These offerings were not just any crops they harvested, but the first fruit. With lots of pomp and ceremony, the people would enter the Jerusalem gate and sing as they entered, bringing the offering to the temple. In both cases, these are celebrated with fire because God manifested himself as fire in Sinai, and fire is also used to burn offerings. Another name of Shavuot is Atzeret, which means completion, because together with Passover, it completes the idea that the Jews gained their freedom from Egyptian slavery on Passover and is completed when they receive the Torah on Shavuot. Our Lord perfects this festival when He Himself completes the idea of dying, ascending to heaven, and sending the Holy Spirit. We must see here a correspondence with our Lord who gives himself to us to eat in the form of bread. St. Paul refers to our Lord as the first fruit. And when we connect it with this celebration, it it is this first fruit that entered the gates of Jerusalem on a donkey and received with cheers and singing. Our Lord then went to the temple just as the offering of Shavuot would be brought to the temple. Our Lord is also the first fruit that is trampled and killed just like wheat so it can be made into bread to eat. With all of this, it would be fitting that this Pentecost would also have fire. Those in the house saw a fire dancing above them and then splitting into smaller flames in the shape of tongues, and each of the flames descending and hovering above each of their heads. Archbishop Fulton Sheen suggested that the divine life that God was endowing us broke up into seven sacraments to configure us to Christ in every stage of our life. Just as the physical body has stages, so does the spiritual life that is part of it. So, in baptism, we get spiritually born into the church. Confirmation strengthens us and makes us bold to proclaim the good news, while the Eucharist feeds us and nourishes us. In our life of service, we are perfected either in matrimony or in holy orders. When our spirit is lightly or mortally wounded, Penance cures it, while when our bodies become frail from sickness of old age, anointing of the sick helps us. These are the rivers of life that flow from the side of Christ that we received in the sacraments. The most immediate and visible of these gifts during Pentecost is confirmation, which comes from the Latin cum firmus, that means with strength. While the apostles have been hiding behind closed doors all this time, today they are filled with a certain courage to go out and preach. They are no longer scared or timid to announce to the rest of the world that Christ has risen from the dead. The Holy Spirit dwelling in them makes them bold, and participating with this grace, they preach. How wonderful to think that the first breaths of the infant church are words of evangelization. In this first mystery, let's realize that the first outward act of the church is to preach the good news. 
The first sound we hear from the infant church is not a cry, but that Christ has risen. This is still the message of the church today, which should bring us joy every single day. Christ has risen. The church will turn 2,000 years old in 2033. And she still proclaims that one message, which where all other words come from, Christ has risen. With that in context, let our actions every day join our mother, the church, in proclaiming that Christ has risen. That's our episode for today. Don't forget to like this episode, click the subscribe button and the bell icon so you'll be notified when the next episode drops. As always, this podcast is brought to you by thecatholictalks.com and kindlingspress.com where you can read more articles on the Catholic faith and find more books on Catholicism. This has been Joe B. Provido. I'll say goodbye for now and please join me again next time when we can learn to pray the rosary better. Bye-bye.